Welcome to LINK uh, 2022 in Paris. My name is Markus Mürnberg from Heidelberg, uh, Germany, and I'm here together with my friend and colleague Paul Bogal from London, UK. And uh, the topic of our interview is how could uh, artificial intelligence influence the decision-making process in acute uh, ischemic stroke. So maybe, Paul, you introduce us a little bit uh, what kind of software you use sure. in your daily practice. Pleasure to be here again with you, Marcus. Um, so uh, in our daily practice, we're using uh, the Brainomics uh, software package. This is an artificial intelligence uh, decision support tool, and it gives you a variety of different information. Um, so it has e-aspects, which is an automated aspect score, uh, which I found to be very accurate. Uh, ECTA, so you have uh, uh, arch to vertex CT angiography that you can both scroll through uh, in all planes, as well as automated um, uh, vessel occlusion detection. And then ECTPA, so automatic uh, CTPA uh, mismatch ratios, etc. Uh, in addition to this, it has uh, in-app uh, messaging features um, as well as, um, like we said, automatic uh, large vessel occlusion detection and pings to make you aware in the middle of the night. Interesting. Can you describe a little bit how it influenced your decision-making process before you introduced the Brainomics software in your daily practice and compared to nowadays? Yeah, sure, of course. So, um, as we mentioned, I'm based at the Royal London Hospital. We went 24-7 uh, for mechanical thrombectomy at the end of 2019. And we had Brainomics in our very local catchment area, so just the local three, four hospitals that we served. But during 2020 and 2021, we continued to expand our geographical area. So now we cover approximately 18 um, spoke hospitals. And 10 of those actually have brainomics and the others do not have brainomics currently. And what we found is that actually the hospitals that have brainomics and use brainomics, not only uh, do they also believe that it provides very good uh, quality uh, as well as good um, cost benefits, but we've seen that actually the door in, door out time for those hospitals using brainomics, so the speed of turnaround for patients uh, is actually much better. It's much faster and it's statistically significant. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, in Heidelberg, we use the same uh, software and actually I have the same impression like you have that centers who are or who have the option to use this uh, software, uh, usually the whole process from transferring the patient or at least making the decision that the patient should be transferred should get a uh, mechanical thrombectomy is much faster compared to the hospitals which don't have the access to this um, software. I agree. So I think, I think the software, as I said earlier, it is a decision support tool. But I think over time, as people become confident, uh, comfortable with it, they gain confidence using it. And so it, it gives that little bit of extra assurance that, yes, this is probably a mechanical thrombectomy eligible case. Uh, yes, I should be picking up the phone to speaking to people or sending text messages uh, to the group via the app itself. Yes. Yeah. So what do you expect for the near future in your local situation? So I think uh, in London and in our surrounding region, as I said, about 50% of our geographical coverage uh, covered area uses Brainomics. So the first port of call, I think, is to, to get the other 50% onto Brainomics. Uh, and I think to continue delivering uh, the care that we've been delivering and looking at some of the results that were shown in ASSIST, I think we here uh, in L London, in England, we are catching up to you guys. Uh, so similar ticky rates, uh, nice uh, MRS outcomes similarly. So the hope is to, to, to boost that and try and get uh, more patients uh, uh, eligible and accessed to Brainomics, I think. And then from there, I'm working very closely with Brainomics uh, hopefully soon with you as well, potentially on some AI-assisted uh, stroke trials. I think that's, uh, that's where I see the future going. That sounds very interesting. So thank you very much for the nice interview. A pleasure as always. Thank you.